Hello, Science 30s. Let's take a look at this genetics practice handout that I've got for you to work on today. Uh, there's a lot of terms and definitions here, so if you haven't had a chance to check out the genetics terms matching handout, that's a good idea, uh, especially if you haven't gone through any of this material in a previous class before. In this video, we're going to go through questions 1, 2, and 6, but if you had questions about any of the other problems this handout, let me know and I'm happy to help you out. Let's start off with the first one here, monohybrid crosses. Uh, so in tomato, the allele for red color, uh, capital R is dominant, and for yellow, it's lowercase r. So first of all, allele is referring to these letters we're talking about here, all right? So this is one allele, that's another allele. It's sort of one way that a gene can come out. And uh, the capital letters always mean dominant, and the lowercase letters mean recessive. In this case, if you have a capital letter, you end up being red for this tomato. So we're going to write out a genotype, which is a combination of these letters, uh, for a heterozygous. Hetero means different tomato. So we want two different alleles here. So capital R, lowercase r. We always put the capital first, lowercase second. That's the genotype, the way those two alleles can go together for a uh, red tomato that is going to be heterozygous. Now we're going to do homozygous red. All right, so if it's going to be red, it has to be a capital R. And if it's homo, meaning the same, then it's got to be two capital R's in a row. Now we're going to do a yellow tomato. There's only one way you can make a yellow tomato. That's with the recessive gene. And uh, the recessive gene is the lowercase r. We're going to have two of those together. So that would be your yellow tomato. What's the phenotype of a tomato with two dominant alleles? So if you had two dominant alleles, we're going to find the phenotype. Now, phenotype is a fancy word for what does it actually look like? Like, what does it present like? What does it physically look like? What could you see with your eyes? So two dominant alleles is going to give you a red tomato. What if you have one dominant and one recessive allele? All right, so we did that earlier. And that's also going to be red because that dominant capital R allele is going to sort of win out over the recessive and make that red color appear. Number two says in a certain flower, the allele for yellow color, capital Y, is dominant to the allele for orange color, lowercase y. Determine the expected probabilities of the genotype and phenotype in offspring produced by the crosses between. And we're going to do three different examples. So we're going to start off here with a, a homozygous yellow and orange flowers, and we're going to figure out the probabilities of each. All right, so let's figure out how to do this. We're going to use a Punnett square for this. Punnett square is pretty easy to go and make. We're going to start off here by just putting down a little grid, kind of like tic-tac-toe. And uh, we're going to have spaces for the yellow flower. So it says homozygous yellow. That means we're going to have two capital Ys there. All right, there's our yellow flower. And the orange flower. So if it's homozygous, that means it's the same. And to be orange, you have that recessive gene. Now we're going to go and do the crosses. Now the way we do these is we sort of just put the Y from above next to the Y on the left here. Y from above next to the Y on the left. Just kind of combine the letters and fill in the results in the boxes. And this one is actually not super interesting because as you can see every single one turns out exactly the same. So that means that our, um, our genotype, which means what is the breakdown of um, all of your different letter combinations. It's 100% the uppercase y, y, lowercase y. For our phenotype, same thing, 100% yellow. That's what that uppercase y, lowercase y means. Since the uppercase y is telling us it's going to be dominant for the uh, yellow color. Now we're going to do two yellow flowers, but they're going to be heterozygous. And we're going to do ratios this time to show the breakdown of the phenotype and the genotype. So here's one heterozygous yellow. Here's the other heterozygous yellow, uppercase, lowercase. All right, so here's my first cross. I get two uppercase Ys. All right, so that's going to be one of the things that I'm going to be able to talk about. I've got an uppercase Y and a lowercase Y and another uppercase Y and a lowercase Y. All right, so there was one of the double uppercase. 
there are two of the uppercase, lowercase. And in the last box here, we have two Ys, which are lowercase. Okay, two of the recessives together. Now for the ratios. For the genotypes, we had one out of four that were capital Y, capital Y, two out of four that were capital Y, lowercase, and one out of four that was lowercase, lowercase. Now let's take a look at the phenotype ratios. So these are gonna be the ratios of the different colors we're gonna see. Uh, first, I need to work out what colors I have. So I'm going to have capital Y, capital Y, that works out to be yellow, two dominants together, capital lowercase, that's also a dominant there, so that's yellow, and the two lowercase Ys are gonna be our oranges. So we have three yellows compared to one orange. You could write that as three to one if you're talking about the yellows, or one to three if you're talking about the orange. So, last one here, we're going to do an orange flower and a heterozygous yellow flower, and we're going to do the probabilities as just a decimal instead of a percentage. Sort of showing some different ways you can see these probabilities expressed. Lowercase y, lowercase y, so that's what our orange flower looks like. The only way you can get orange is with those two recessives in this question. And then uppercase y, lowercase y for our heterozygous yellow. Do my crosses here. Those two came out the same, and then I've got two lower cases, two lower cases. All right, so for my genotype, it looks like half of them, so 0 0.5 as a probability, as a, per, a decimal, not a percentage, will be lowercase y, uppercase y, and 0 0.5 of them will be lowercase y, lowercase y. For the phenotype, actually what colors are going to be, we're going to go and have kind of the same thing, 0.5% chance, uh, not percent chance, probability chance of it being orange, and same chance of it being yellow. Let's take a look at number six from our handout on the genetic practice uh, handout. This is a sex-linked question, and this one's a, a little bit different um, than some of the Punnett squares we looked at earlier, but the basic idea is the same. Uh, all we're gonna do differently now is we're gonna deal with an X and a Y chromosome uh, instead of just uh, an uppercase and a lowercase. So it's a little extra layer, but it's not too bad to do. Uh, number six says in one form of hemophilia, uh, a recessive, X-linked allele, which is shown by X with a superscript H above it, incre increases blood clotting time. Uh, that's what causes this disease uh, and it makes it so that it's hard for your blood to clot, uh, leading to health issues. Explain how hemophilic uh, offspring can be born to two normal parents. So in order to do this, we need to make a Punnett square. And my Punnett square is going to show the crosses between uh, a man and a woman, and both of them are going to be normal, which means they won't have this particular disease. Now, how do you know if someone has a disease or not in terms of writing down um, all of these letters? So let's just start off by making a, a man and a woman. Uh, so here's a woman, two X chromosomes, and here's a man, an X and a Y chromosome. Now it says this is a recessive X-linked allele. So if it's a recessive sort of disease, that means you only have it if you have two of those recess recessive genes. Um, so we're not going to have anybody like that here because it says this question has is normal parents, parents who don't have the disease. So that means they might be carrying the disease, but they don't have two of the recessive alleles. So I could have for the, the mom here, one of the recessive alleles, lowercase h, but also one of the dominant alleles. Now, because she has that dominant allele, she won't actually have hemophilia, uh, but she can still carry the gene for it and possibly pass it on to her children. Now for the man here, uh, the Y doesn't get any H's on it uh, because this is an X-linked disease, all right? So we only have to really think about the X chromosomes, but certainly we will have a letter on the uh, X chromosome here. And I chose the capital H again because this is a normal parent. This man here does not have hem hemophilia because he doesn't have that recessive allele. So now let's go and do our crosses. So our crosses are gonna contain the X's and the Y's, as well as the H's. So here's our first possibility. 
Now this kid who I just drew out here uh, will not have hemophilia. The dominant capital H will beat out the recessive lowercase h, so that child would be a carrier for hemophilia but wouldn't be affected, and that would be a girl. Uh, our next one here, we're going to have, uh, let's put our y first, and then our x lowercase h. So this person here would have hemophilia, all right? Because we got no dominant capital H to beat out that lowercase h. Just to finish it off really fast here, here's another possibility of a child. This one isn't even a carrier for hemophilia, so the disease sort of ends if this is uh, the baby that's produced here with the two capital H's. And our last one here, and that, that was a girl, uh, is a, a Y and an X as well, but that X is again the dominant gene. So those two children, this boy, this girl, would not even be carriers of the diseases. But there is one possibility, in fact there's a one in four chance that the child is affected. So you can see here how even if the parents don't necessarily have hemophilia, they can be carriers of that recessive gene and possibly pass it off to the, uh, their child. Letter B says, can any of the female offspring uh, inherit hemophilia? No. As we saw from our Punnett squares, uh, the two females we had here, females are made up of two X chromosomes. Here's the first possibility that capital H, the dominant not having hemophilia gene, beats out the lowercase h, so that child won't have it, will be a carrier though. The other woman that would be produced here has got two dominant for not having hemophilia. So no chances that any females could inherit this disease.